In this video, I'm going to go through the theory behind one of AQA's GCSE required practicals, making a salt. I also have a walkthrough video for this practical, which you can find in the links below, but it's a good idea to start here. The salt generally made in schools is copper sulfate. You could be asked about different salts in your exam, but the practical method will be the same, just with different reactants and products. So there are a number of ways to make salts. Let's have a look at the few methods now. So the first method, you can use a metal oxide, react that with an acid, and you'll get your salt and water. So we want to make copper sulfate. Have a look at that salt, and you can see the first word is copper. That gives you an indication of the metal oxide you need. The metal, is, the metal oxide is going to be copper oxide. Then, if you look at the second half of the salt, it says sulfate. If you get a sulfate, that means the acid used must have been sulfuric acid. The second method to make a salt involves using a metal carbonate. You, you react this with your acid, getting a salt plus carbon dioxide and water. So again, if we want to make copper sulfate, the metal carbonate used must have been copper carbonate. Then because the salt ends in sulfate, that means the acid used has to be sulfuric acid. A third method to make a salt is using a metal hydroxide. You again react this with an acid and you get a salt and water. Hopefully you can see a pattern here. If the salt we want to make is copper sulfate, then in this case the metal hydroxide we must have used is copper hydroxide. To get a sulfate salt, the acid used has to be sulfuric acid. The fourth method you will have learnt about to make a salt is reacting a metal and an acid to make a salt and hydrogen. Now in the case of copper and sulfuric acid, this doesn't happen. So let's have a look at the chemical equation to try and figure out why. So we've got copper plus H2SO4 and theoretically that gives us copper sulfate and hydrogen. So what you can see here, the hydrogen has been replaced with copper. Or should we say we're getting copper to displace hydrogen? This is an example of a displacement reaction. Now the thing about displacement reactions is that the thing that displaces the hydrogen has to be more reactive than hydrogen. It has to be higher on the reactivity series to be able to do this. Copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so it cannot displace hydrogen, and that's why this reaction doesn't go ahead. So these are the two practical methods that you could be asked about in an exam. I'm going to focus on method one for simplicity, but you can apply all practical steps to method two. Now it's important to note health and safety, not only because you could be asked about it in an exam, but also because it's an important part of carrying out practicals safely for yourself and others around you. So copper oxide and copper sulfate are both irritants and corrosive. One molar sulfuric acid is an irritant, so with all this in mind, you should be wearing safety goggles. And if you get anything on your, on your skin, then you should wash it off immediately with water. So there are three main steps to this practical. Step one, we react the copper oxide and sulfuric acid. Then there's a filtration step. And finally, you have evaporation, and that's where the crystals start to form. So looking at step one, you're going to set up your apparatus like this. Okay, and step one involves pouring 40 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid into the beaker. You heat the acid gently using this setup, so you've got a Bunsen burner on a roaring flame. When it's almost boiling, 
that's when you turn off the Bunsen burner. So you don't let it burn rapidly, uh, boil rapidly. You let it start to boil. Then you add your copper oxide until it no longer disappears and you allow it to cool. So you may be asked to draw apparatus in your exam and to do this you use a pencil and a ruler and this is how you would draw the gauze and the tripod. There's no need to draw a Bunsen burner, all you do is draw an arrow with the word heat and then your beaker and uh, liquid is simply drawn like this and make sure you label your apparatus appropriately. Once your copper oxide has been added to the sulfuric acid it looks like this. Recall the equation for the reaction and in the beaker you've got copper sulfate which is the product and that's dissolved in water your other product. So that's what our liquid is in here, it's copper sulfate dissolved in water. There's also going to be a solid and that's any unreacted copper oxide. We want to separate the liquid and the solid and the way you do that is step two, it's filtration. What you do is you set up your funnel and filter paper, paper over a conical flask like so and you filter the contents of the beaker. So you pour what's in the beaker into this setup here. To draw this in an exam, you would draw the conical flask like so. You would draw the funnel in this way and your filter paper like that. So the drawings that you do sometimes look a bit different to real life, but this is how we draw scientific diagrams. So in the conical flask at the bottom, you've got your copper sulfate dissolved in water. Now copper sulfate is actually a dissolved solid and your water is a, is a liquid. All we want is the copper sulfate, we don't want the water. So now we need a separation technique that removes liquid from a solid. And for that we use evaporation. So this is the apparatus in what it looks like in real life. The steps here are you pour the contents of your conical flask into this evaporating basin. You heat it until crystals form and the method of heating is this water bath. So you've got a beaker half filled with water and it's heated with the Bunsen burner. Once those crystals begin to form, you take it off the heat and you leave it in a cool place, for example a windowsill, and you leave it for about a day or so to crystallise. So again, if you're asked to draw this in an exam, you would draw your gauze and tripod like so. The Bunsen burner just requires an arrow and the word heat. There's your beaker which contains water, and your evaporating basin is drawn like this. So those are the general steps on how to make a salt and you can call on all of those points when answering exam questions on this topic. Next, watch my practical instructional video for a real life look at this experiment and you can find a link below.